Okay, I figured out a better mate. Check and mate with the five queens. Perfect. There we go. That's a perfect, beautiful check, mate. Anyway, we're going to start this first, first game of the arena. My opponent plays d4. I'm going to play knight f6 here. Bishop f4. Why am I not hearing sounds? I hear no board sounds. I don't know. You guys hear the sounds or not? Or am I crazy? I'm not hearing any sounds. One second. Ah, there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, let's play c5 here. Go C3. So we're playing the London system here. That now you guys should hear the board sounds, right? Now you hear the board sounds for sure. Um, you hear it now, right? I assume you hear it now. Yeah, yeah, you hear it now, okay? Because the board sounds are down at eleven for some reason. Okay, so we have a London system here. I'm gonna play. Um, I'm gonna play as D5 move with Bishop D6 and Knight 6. Very standard setup here. Um, to try and trade off the pieces very, very quickly. Now, it's worth noting in the London, white tries to grip this e5 square. So what I'm going to do here is not go to e7. I'm going to go to c7. So I go guard both the pawn and the bishop. And then play knight e7 and try to play e5 and, and take away white's ideas involving the square. What happened with my cam? Uh, this cam is okay. It's, it's not great. I get it. But it's decent, I think. Or I hope it's decent, at least. Um, is it not okay? Is it really bad? I mean, I know it's not great. It's not my cam that I have at home, but I mean, I'm, I'm on the road, obviously. So let's take the pawn here. It's, oh, there's a light flick. So is it the light? So if I turn the light away, is it flick is there flickering now or not? Like, is it, is it flickering still? I don't know. Is it better or worse? I, I don't know. Oh, so if I have the light over me, it's, it's worse. Okay, let's take the bishop here. Um... Ah, uh, so I, I can't have the light over me. Okay, good to know. Let's castle and play rook d8 and knight c6. It's better now. Okay, okay, cool. Cool. So, yeah, let's let's play uh, queen c7. Now, if I were to play e5 here, there's this very fancy trick with knight c4 to fork both the pawn and the queen. And so I'm going to move away and then play e5 so there's no nastiness here. And then I'll build my big black center with e5 and rook d8 here. Is that Hikaru looks strange, new hairstyle? No, it's just that I shaved off my beard, you guys, because it was annoying me. So let's bring out D's knights. Now we've got a big black center. We've got D's knights in the center. I can bring the rook out or the bishop. Let's go here, put our rooks on D8 and E8. And eventually I intend to push some P in the center of the board here. So, yeah. With the beard, you look better. Thank you, appreciate it. But at the at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, uh, if I have a um, if I have the beard and it, get, it gets too long, it starts to really bother me. So teach their own. Let's go rook d8 and rook e8 here. Thanks so much to Danny PH for the five. Thank you to Andy Moab for the 27 months. Thank you so much to Camper One SS for the sub months. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. So yeah. Okay, we get Queen E2. I'm gonna go rook e8 here now. I've got the perfect setup. Rooks on the two open files, or not open files, but on the files with my central pawns. Knights are developed, bishops developed. I think I'm going to play h6 here to create some Latanza for the king. He goes c4, so he's trying to strike in the center. Um, but now I'll play d4. Now you'll start to see why I put these rooks on these two files, because something is going to open up here in the center of the board. Do I like Qatar? I love it. It's great. I mean, I, I was last year in 2016, so it's been a while. Um, it's actually, for me, it's very, very similar to Abu Dhabi, another place that I was in quite recently. So um, I feel pretty good. It, it's a little bit too hot, perhaps. But I mean, that, of course, it, I mean, there's nothing that can be done about that. But overall, it's great. Can we get b3? I'm going to go knight d7, try to build a bastion with knight c5, and then push d3 here. So, we'll go from there. Yeah, thoughts on human rights? Good one, you guys. Good one. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Let, let's 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 uh, let's let's take your I, I I guess what I would give you guys the basic basic generic saying is um what, what there's there's a great saying in the uh in in the, the good old book from from forever ago which is something like what is it let he who is without sin cast the first stone right isn't that the saying um so that's that's all I'm gonna say on the topic let he who is without sin cast the first stone let's play a5 so I can go knight c5 and build a bash in here and then play d3 next move I've got a great bash and white can't push the pawns on the queen side um get rook b1 i'm gonna play g6 here to stop knight f5 or knight g5 get queen d2 let's go king h7 maybe so my position is pretty decent here uh it goes a3 so we can play b4 next move uh i mean f6 i think i'm gonna play here to create a chain of three he goes b4 let's go here knight c3 and now i've got an outpost for the knight the pawns on c4 and b4 are very very weak 
need a Miami pie for the tournaments. How's the 400 playing faster than you? This is 5-0, right? Oh, wait, this is 3-0. I thought, oh, I meant to make this 5-0. Oh, I didn't mean to make this 3-0. That's my bad. That's why I was so slow. I thought this was 5-0, not 3-0. But anyway, all right. So I've got a great connect to 4 here. B4 is very weak. I can go Bishop F7. I sax the Rook. I'll take. I'll go here. Stack the two Rooks. Player for Rook D1 here. Let's go Rook D3. Hit the pawn on B4. Um, or play Rook B3. Let's take. Now I've got the two towers, the double stack on the D5. It looks like a very, very pleasant position here. Let's go Queen C4 and trade. Actually, the Knight was hanging on F3 as well, but it doesn't matter. So, I'll get takes. I'll play um, Rook to D1 here. Try to trade off some Rooks. Let's go here, hit the Knight. Let's go here, hit the Knight. Let's take, take. Let's go here. I'm just going to take and take. And now I'm simply up one pawn here. And now I just start pushing the peepos. Second mate, there we go. All right, let's keep going. Next game. Thank you so much to Fenarium for the or uh, Fenarium for the prime and be arrogant as well for the prime. Okay, let's play. Oh, I meant to go e4, not e3. So now I'll change it into a d4 system. Uh, or actually, no, let's play in English here. Play in English with c4 and e3. Have I tried Arabian food? Um. Well, I mean, I've had some stuff, like, I've had some stuff um, that I guess is Middle Eastern, like Baba Ganoush. Um, what else have I had? I mean, like, like pita and some of that sort of stuff, which I think is like Middle Eastern Levantish. I, I don't know the exact differences. Um, okay, I'm going to go G3 and Fianchito the Bishop, and then I'm also going to go Knight E2, and then play for D4, F4 with the Knight. So... Anyway, no, why am I playing 500? So we're doing an educational ring, trying to explain some of the basics in the opening phase of the game. Now, I could move the bishop, but then he takes and my pawns get stacked. So I'm going to start with 92 so that I can take and not ruin my pawn structure here. And then I will fianchito the bishop and castle the king. Have I had tabouli? Uh, I've had tabouli a lot, yeah. But again, I don't know what's like what is Middle Eastern or what is like Greek and Turkish and all everything else. Like it all kind of blends together for me. He goes d5, but I see uno, dos, tres attacking. He's guarding with one and two. So it's a free pawn. So I will just take the knight because I have one, two, and he has one, two. So I should be winning this trade. Thank you so much to Galois RG for the prime. They had a burbiter for the prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, so he takes with the knight. Um... If I take with the bishop, he might have some bishop h3. I need to stop me from casting. So I'll just take with the pawn, bring the queen out, hit the bishop. And um, that's a Botez Gambit. Uh, Rolex sponsorships after your comments on day two. No, um, no, no, uh, no sponsorships incoming uh, as far as I know. But it's all good. That's a real 400 indeed, you guys. Indeed. So anyway, I hope everybody's doing really, really well. It's been a while since I last streamed. Um, I'm not gonna be streaming a lot this month because obviously I'm playing here and I'm playing in um playing in Isle of Man afterwards, but um it's all it's all good. So yeah. He knows what he's doing. Okay, I'm gonna drop the juicer back, cast the king, and then eventually try to bring the bishop and the rook into the game somehow. I don't know whether I'll go this way or this way, but get the bishop rook in the game, and then eventually having the extra queen will win me the game. Any tournament after Isle of Man? Um, after Isle of Man, I do not have any terms scheduled. Um, there probably will be a World Rapid and Blitz later on, but we'll see. Because Rookie 8. Okay, now I'm just going to try to open up the board because I have an extra queen here. So I'm happy to just trade off all these dangerous pieces here. The Rooks, the Bishops, and the Knight. Thoughts on the U.S. Championships? Um... I saw Fabiano won. I mean, I think if I look objectively, Fabiano's played the best chess. I mean, I feel like some of the other players who are at the top have been a little bit lucky. If I, if I were giving you guys like the pure breakdown, I would say I've been, Fabiano's played well. I mean, he, I wouldn't say great. He's just played, he's played, he's played well. He's played what you expect from him when he's playing really well. Um, Misha to me has actually had the second best tournament by a country mile. Misha has been very, 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 uh, very very enterprising a lot of games i mean he no expectations for misha to do well whatsoever i think misha's played great fob not fabiano sorry like wesley wesley and um lenny or dominguez are both on plus two both have been extremely lucky though i mean if you look at the game yesterday wesley 100 should have lost to ray robson got extremely lucky to win that game I mean, the quality of his play was not there at all um 
So Wesley got very lucky to win yesterday. Dominguez played a good game against Andrew Tang, but I think there was another game he won that he should not have won, or maybe a game he should have lost that he drew. Um, so I, I, I would say that objectively, I feel like uh, I feel like Fabiano has been pretty impressive, and I feel like Mishra's had a great tournament. Um, there we go. Let's take the bishop, hit the knight, hit the pawn. This is going to be winning pretty soon. Yeah. So, so I would say when I look at look at it overall, I, I've been very, very impressed by Mishra. I mean, he clearly, I know some people are going to get, get annoyed or try to start some drama with me saying this, but I think Mishra by far and away is the, um, I mean, if anybody's going to get there of the U.S. juniors, I think it's definitely going to be Mishra. He's so young. He's only like 14 or 15. He's already playing very well against the top dogs. Um, I mean, mind you, you could say he got a little bit lucky yesterday because he was losing in his game against Shanklin, but he kept it together and... Um, I would just say I've been pretty impressed by by his uh, by his play altogether. So we're gonna get a checkmate here very soon. Okay, let's keep going. I think there was a Trent zero or um, Trent zero zero two for the thirty month resub. Also, you guys, uh, one of the great things is even though I'm here on the road, I actually have like this. Uh, what's it called? I think it's called Verzen or something. Uh, I've got like this Verzen double monitor, so I can actually follow chat, and it's very much like being at home. So like going forward, I can probably start streaming more on the road. Okay, we get knight c3. I'm going to play the classic slob opening here with c6 and d5. Very standard slob. I go knight f6. And then either after knight f6 here, I can play e6 or bishop f5, depending on which setup white goes for. Yeah, it's the Verzen Portable Monitor. That's what it is. It's called Verzen Portable Monitor. It's like, it was like 600 bucks. It wasn't cheap. Um, but I, So I essentially have um, I have two monitors just on my right, as you guys can see. Although it's a little bit above the eye line. So like when I'm at home, you see me look over. I'm looking at the same eye line as my main monitor. But here it is a little bit higher. So if, if you guys be used to watch my regular streams, you're, you'll see me like I'm looking a little bit higher up than I would because at home it's the same. The, the, the monitor is the exact same. Whereas here my laptop is, is lower. So okay, we got bishop g5. I'm going to play e6 here and try to develop the bishop maybe. Am I satisfied being the five-time U.S. champion? Oh, I'm very satisfied. I mean, as I said, it would have been nice to have won another one somewhere along the way. But for me, winning the... Uh, I'm going to go here, maybe take and b5, maybe bishop b7, maybe bishop b4. Let's go over one of the cheesier lines, the queen a5, bishop b4. This is what's called the, called the Cambridge Springs defense. Um, so, yeah, I'm very pleased. And honestly, for me, winning the American Cup in March, I felt was the equivalent of winning a sixth U.S. championship. So I feel great about it. Um, for anybody who's asking why did I play here in Doha over the U.S. championship, I told you guys before, uh, I had a scheduling conflict. There was going to be a filming project I was working on in Morocco, in Marrakesh specifically. Then there was this earthquake. There was also an IMF uh, meeting that was happening at the same time. So it ended up getting postponed. But by the time it got postponed, I'd already declined the U.S. championship. I think I declined like a month, month, month at least in advance. Um, so I was left with a big, big hole in my schedule and the organizers here in Doha were very nice. They, they invited me to this event and I figured why not play? Thank you so much to Cadmo for 38 months. Thank you so much to Jackie Bowie for the prime. Okay, let's go here and put maximum pressure on the diagonal towards the night on C3. Yeah. Am I prepping for Pravin? Well, today was a rest day. So actually I did do some preparation. Um, I did, did do some preparation earlier already for, for the round tomorrow. Um, obviously, I'll be doing more. Now, I'm going to take because he can't take the queen due to the pin. Um, but, yeah, I feel pretty good. What brand is the monitor I've never heard of? It's called Vers and Portable Monitor, V-I-R-Z-E-N. So, all right, you got Bishop D3 now. The problem here is I have no development. Like, you'll see, I've got this nice little um, mini Pyramid of Giza, but I have no development on the queen side. The Bishop and the Rook are very, very passive. There's too much stuff in the way. So, since I'm up a pawn here... If I can, I'm going to trade off the queens. So, that, so with queens off the board, it becomes a lot less dangerous for me because eventually I should be able to develop without getting attacked very quickly. So obviously, I'm going to try to trade pieces because I have this extra A pawn that I want to push down the board. What do I do when I get bored of playing chess? Um, I play um, I play Fortnite. That's what, that's what I do. Okay, go C5. I'm going to go B6. Again, trying to open up the Fianchito for the bishop. Also open up a file for my rook on A8 as well. So now... Now I'm just up a pawn. I get rid of another piece. And in the long term, seven is worth more than six. Um, seven pawns are worth more than six. So we got C4 here. I think, I mean, because we're playing for themes, I'm just going to trade all the pieces down. Again, at the end of the day, I have an extra juicer. So let's go C5. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. He has one, two, three, four, five. So the extra pawn should, should matter. Thank you, JP, for the 21. Thank you, Tech Monster, for the 20 months. Appreciate it. Let's take with a pawn. Put a rook behind this pawn, and then we're just going to start pushing the P up the board. Is my stepdad also in Qatar? No, he's not. He's actually back in uh, New York. He's back in the United States. Came for a few days at the start. 
Okay, if he'd taken the rook, I actually had a classic ice skater with rook a1. So he goes rook c1. So let's go rook b4. Try to trade off the rooks again. Try to get a pawn. Push some t up the board. Is the food good out there? The food's great. Yeah, food's great. Goes rook c2. Uh, I'll go here. Try to force a trade of the rook somewhere on this file if I can. Yeah, let's go here, force a rook off the board. And eventually, you're just going to see that one extra pawn is enough to win the game. Now, if we're playing a top player, I would have probably been a little bit cleaner with my technique. This is against a top player. I'm not sure I would actually win this, but here I think I will win. So we've got the kebab with rook b2 hitting the king and the pawns. Let's go king d6. No fork with knight c4 due to the pin. Goes king d3. Okay, now I think I'm going to go here to sidestep the fork with knight c4. Uh, Kebab, that is the name that uh, Felix Longjell gave to the uh, to that checkmate. Or not checkmate, to uh, attacks on the second rank. So, again, I always try to put, pay homage to the guys who helped me get to where I am today. I'm going to play f5 to hit the knight. Hit the pawns. He hangs the knight. Let's just take. And now let's just start pushing the p. So, yeah, that's an xuc term. Um... Let's go here. I can fork him with knight c5, forking the king and the rook, and then I just push the p, get a queen. And anytime you've got a queen in your life, it's very, very good. So let's take the pawn on f2. Why did he carve shape? Because my beard was getting too long and too annoying. Um, let's go queen c7, maybe. Is there not a forced checkmate? I'm trying to find a checkmate here. I'll go check maybe here. I'm trying to find a forced checkmate in the middle. I think there's just forced checkmate. There we go. Opponent played well. He did play very well. Yeah. Yeah. People on Reddit are so ungrateful for the chess boom you and Felix made. Oh, there's plenty of topics we can talk about related to um, related to Reddit. Yeah. There's, I mean, like, I, I loved it. There was, a, there was a thread on Reddit of another guy playing a London system. This time, I'll play a different setup. Um, oh, I meant to go C5, not C6. What's my mouse doing? Uh, let's play Queen B6 anyway. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Okay, now I guess I'll go D6 and maybe E5 here if I can. Or maybe, like, actually, maybe I'll go here and then try to, try to immediately attack. I'm going to go e5. I think my opponent's made a mistake. I, I feel like I'm getting a lot of play really, really quickly here. Um, let's just take. And I feel like I'm getting massive, massive attack in a really uh, quick fashion. Here's like knight a6 and rook d8. D's bishop's very well, very well placed. Now we just go like here. And look at this maximum pressure. There's tremendous pressure. I think I'm already winning the game. This is why you have to be very careful when you play bad openings like the London system. Because if your opponent knows what they're doing, they can cheese you pretty hard because you're too much of a system player. So let's go knight t2, knight f3, and I mean, it's just lost. Again, this is how you beat the London system in eight moves. Yet again, um, let's take with the classic double check. So, yeah. What I was going to say is, um, did I see Kramnik accusing Lazovic? You know, I I'm, I'm going to talk about all that after this arena. Um... You know, but but what I would say on that topic is there's certain plays where people love to pretend that, like, I make things up. Where it's like, oh, he says this. It's not true. He's making it up for clicks. Blah, blah, blah. All, all the usual all, all the usual nonsense. Um, but for anybody who actually has been watching my streams, you would have heard me talk about Kramnik in the past. And I'm, I was talking about, like, how Title Tuesday, I think there are issues with cheating. But then in events like the Chess Champions Tour, there aren't issues like that. But there are... there. I did sort of hint that there were some people who were unhappy about the Chess Champions Tour. Um, and, of course, this is what, you know those players were referring to. So uh, I, I'm kind of surprised it came from Kramnik and not from, say, certain other top players, perhaps. But uh, it was, this is not some big secret that there are certain players who who are like who suspect Lazovic. But I don't really believe it. Um, again, I'll get into that later, but not right now. So I'm going to hit the pawn, take the pawn on c5 here um, and should be... Uh, should be really good. Yeah, the Reddit thread I was going to refer to was actually, I was talking about 2500s, and everyone's saying, oh, Hikaru's complaining about 2500s, and he can't beat them. Like, why is he playing an open? Why is he complaining? Um, Well, that was not at all what I was doing. I was simply talking about the fact that if you look at the rating system right now, mathematically speaking, there's a certain percentage by which, like, say, Magnus or myself or any other top player should beat these lower-rated players, Um, and we're not. So that means there's something wrong because the math doesn't agree. So does that mean we're overrated? Does that mean they're underrated? What exactly is going on? But the math does not agree, and you can't really argue with math so we get king f1 um now i have extra pieces here so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna play king f8 and like rook d8 and bishop b6 here i'm just gonna slowly push the p on the queen side okay let's go b5 probably rook d8 and bishop b6 here okay let's just take the bishop i'm gonna go here now i'm just gonna start pushing the p with the rook behind the pawn just start pushing P. 
You just go. Go C3, maybe B4 here, and maybe A5, A4 sooner or later. Things are shot Mark Meech for the 30 months, and Don Alberto for the 37. Let's play A5 here. Also, talk about the Fabian a 50% or cheating comment. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't seen that clip. If my mods get me a clip of the Fabiano, um, uh, I mean, if there if there's an actual clip, I, I can obviously cover it. Let's play G6 here. Um, let's go H5, fix the weak pawn. Eventually, I want to just push push the peoples on both sides of the board. Okay, let's just take here, I guess. Let's go back, guard the pawn, and I'm just going to keep pushing the P. Let's go H4. Actually, I had C2, which is winning too, but this is good enough. Uh, yeah, la, 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 la. Let's go here in F5. Just push the P. He's always got a pawn, so there's no stalemate. That's the reason I'm not worried about pushing pawn. Now, what can I get? I can get five queens. Let's go here. I have to be careful, actually, because now the pawn can't move. But let's, let's just get five. Um, how do I sack my materials here? There we go. There we go. Five checkmates. Actually, okay, I figured out a better mate. Check. Oh, wait. No, I messed it up. Wait. There we go. Check and mate with the five queens. Perfect. There we go. That's a perfect, beautiful checkmate. All right. Five queens. Okay. Next game, we're going to play E4 this time. Get E4, E5. Let's play the King's Gambit this time. Now, this is an opening that I don't recommend at the very beginner level, but I think you can play it uh, to some degree at the lower levels. Okay, we get d6. Um, now, both bishop moves are good here. I think I'm going to go bishop c4 this time to hit the pawn in the knight. Thanks for the educational checkmate. Yeah, I mean, well, it's educational. Yeah. Um, let's play c3. I want to stop knight d4. I also maybe want to go queen b3 and create the classic right triangle idea here. Um, but if I go queen b3, it just goes queen d7, takes here, here. And then I have problems in the center, so let's go here, guard the pawn, guard this one, and keep this idea in our back pocket and save the right triangle. Can I play b4 with white? Of course I could. That is the orangutan opening. It's obviously a, a pretty decent opening. We got bishop e7 here. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, to Martin, for the 22 months. Okay, so let's just castle here and play h3. I want to force him to take so I can take, and then eventually I just want to bring these three... Th these three boys to the party, but we can't do it right away. Okay, now this does give me G4 and F5, and he just trapped his bishop. Now, this is something you have to be very careful. Uh, and every, whenever you bring a bishop out to pin the horse, you should be very, very careful that when you retreat to H5 and G6, you don't get it trapped by the pawns. The idea behind King's Gambit is to have quick, easy development and easy tar attacking targets. Um, and your opponent has to, like, defend very quickly. Okay, let's just take the pawn here. Okay, now what I want to do here is uh, I'm trying to find some kind of fancy schmancy checkmate, but I don't really see it. Instead, I'm just going to rip open the age file here and checkmate with the queen. Can I play an Evans Gambit? Of course I could. But again, I don't want to play openings that are too far out there because at the beginner level, don't forget most of my opponents are very low rated. I want the games to have some purpose. It's not just like to stomp them. So there's certain openings that I play like it just ends up being a stomp and it's not realistic. So I'm going to go here and knight f5, put the knife on f5. Now, one person who knows how to use his knights, of course, is Fabiano Caruana, because against both Hans Neiman and Sam Shank in the last two rounds, he put a knight on f5 and f4, which would have made Gary Kasparov very proud. Let's go knight f5. Let's take the knight. Let's take the bishop here. And now I just have extra pieces. I've just got uh, an extra, extra knight, extra bishop here. Queen h4, good move, hitting the knight and the pawn, but I can guard both with the king. 
How do you punish the cow opening? Uh, first of all, it's not really called the cow opening. Um, it's an opening that's been around for a long time. I know, like, it's meme and everything to call it that. Um, but the main the main way you punish it is to push on the edge, specifically h4, h5 if they go knight g6 or a4, a5. Um, let's go rook f5. I want to go knight 3, rook h5, and go for a checkmate. It's actually an opening that a good friend of mine used like 25 years ago um, in uh, in Crazy House. Not Crazy House, sorry. In, um, Actually, yeah, in Crazy House Chess Online. But basically, the way that you punish the opening is you push whichever, whichever, when the knight comes out to like g6 or g3, you can push h4, h5 very, very quickly and attack. Um, thoughts on Tyler 1? Like I said, I mean, if, if I give the honest brutal take, everyone's going to get mad at me because they're going to think that I'm like diminishing what he's done. But if you, if you're, if we're being really honest and looking at the whole perspective of it, it's not about like the days that it's taken to get, get to 1400. It's about the hours that he's put into chess. And when you're putting in 12 hours, uh, every single day playing like that is something that until recently, almost nobody could do like that. That's just the reality is nobody could really do that. Um... Do I have a beautiful check? Wait, I gotta go for the queen sack. One second. Um, I don't see a checkmate. Knight of five is king of six. Go check. Go check. Somehow there's no actual mate. But I think after king of five, I can like, I think I can go here, and he's, he's just getting like fossilized every which way. Because king f4, that's also a good move. Hmm. How is there no checkmate here? Oh, this is a beautiful... Oh, this is like such a beautiful checkmate. I go check, and rook f3, and the king has no squares, because these knights cover them both. These knights cover the squares. This is so beautiful. Look at this checkmate. I mean, look at this checkmate. The king has no squares here. Both squares are covered by these knights. That's a beautiful checkmate. Let's keep going. Yeah, that's pretty beautiful. So yeah, so what I was saying about Tyler One, for example, is that if you perceive that he's putting twelve hours, in, let's just use let's just use ten to keep the numbers even. But let's just say for the last I don't know thirty days, he's spending ten hours a day playing chess. That's essentially ten times thirty. That's three hundred hours in a month. Now, at pretty much no time in history has it been possible, at least in terms of over the board chess, to uh, to accumulate that many games or that much experience in the same time frame. So like. It's, it seems really impressive because the number of days it's been, but that's essentially the equivalent, I would say, of spending, like, let's, let, let me just think back to the old days. Let's just say you play two tournaments a week, that's like eight hours, eight hours a week, and then you study like three hours every day, or, or let's just say three hours times the additional five days, that's 15, 15 plus eight, that's 23 hours, um, that's 23 hours in a week. So let's just assume that's 23 hours in a week. Um, Tyler One is literally putting in those hours in two days because of all the online games. So... When people look and they're like, oh, it's like it's like 30 days or something that's improved that much. Yes, it's very impressive on the one hand, but on the other hand, he's literally playing for like 12 hours every day. He's playing 300 hours in a month, whereas in, in normal times, it would take you probably, um, probably that's like three or four months of actual, um, that's three or four months of, uh, of actual gameplay for over the board chess. So it, it is impressive on the one hand, but it's also not impressive because like it's, it's you have to look at you have to use the perspective of sheer hours that are that are being put into the game. But on the other hand, what I'm really curious to see is there. Thank you, just be kind for the five gifted subs. What I'm really curious to see is there's a very famous um, I forgot is it called Outliers? There's a book by Malcolm. Uh, there's there's a book by Malcolm Gladwell which says if you put it's something like ten thousand hours, there's like a ten thousand hours rules that you'll be um, that you'll be like really really good at a game. No, but like when people talk about his over the board, you say he got to 1400 in like one month and that sounds really impressive, um, but he's also spending like 12 hours every single day and you can't study that, you can't do that much when you do normal comparisons of like over the board chess. So it's like when someone starts out and they go, you know, it takes them a couple months to go from like 500 or 400 over the board to like 1200, that's because they, it takes them time to play the games to accumulate the hours. So that's, that's what I'm saying. I, again, I'm not saying that it'll make sense to a lot of people, but... Um, anyway, 10,000 hours could be considered mastery of a skill. Yeah. Okay, waiting for a move here. Let's see what we get. Um, takes, takes. I'm simply up a piece here. Uh, my king is out of center. I can develop the bishop, develop the knight, play c5. Actually, maybe I'll play knight e7, knight g6 next game. Just, just for the memes. Why not? What playing to studying notion do you think Tyler should be doing? Um, 
I assume he's just playing chess, right? But see, that's the pro that's the problem with chess, that chess is different. So, like, for example, if I the Gladwell book has no scientific backing. Oh, okay, let's just take the queen. The flag should be Slovenia, right? Or Slovakia. Okay, close enough. Um there's no scientific backing to Malcolm Gladwell's book. Oh, well, that is disappointing. Um, let's take and block him so he can't meet me on the D file here. What is very impressive about Tyler 1, though, is that he's doing it day after day. Because he has hit the wall. Like, he has hit the wall. I mean, maybe at this point he's so addicted to chess and he's, he's a glutton for punishment that he'll keep doing it. But he definitely has hit the wall. Um, so, I mean, it, that is actually, I'm, I'm amazed it's still, like, I feel like it's been, like, four, five, six days, maybe, since he, actually, I was going to play a cow. Um, let's go 92, 92 through this game. It's a little bit different. Let's go this way and take and try to go, go this way. Let's take. This isn't really what I want to do, but he, my opponent just blunders. And this is another thing that at the beginner levels, like, these weird opening, weird and wacky opening systems work very, very well because your opponent's like, they, they're really hardwired to play certain moves. And like my opponent just hung a bishop right out of the opening. Thank you to Aiden R. Chess for the uh, 42 months. Thank you to Astro Bob. Thank you so much to Mate Proof. Thank you so much to D Town. Thank you to Aiden, 40, 40, or 40, not 42, 48 months. Thank you for the four years, man. Let's take the pawn on G7. Hit the rook on H8. Nothing can stop Tyler one, not even himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the pro but the thing I was trying to say about chess is that it's, it, the problem is when you get hard stuck, you have to change something. That's the problem. Like it's, it's, it's not like say Fortnite, for example, like I'll just use Fortnite as an example, but like, you know, if I play Fortnite, assuming that I'm fresh and I'm not dead tired, but if I play Fortnite over and over again, like learning the mechanics, that's how I'm going to continue to improve the game. But that's not how chess works. At some point, the pattern recogn recognition only takes you so far and you have to do really serious studying as well. That's the problem. Chess is not a game that you can just keep grinding. You hit that wall and then you have to change things. Do I have any digital watches? Um, I have a Rolex. Um, I have a Rado. Um, those are obviously not digital watches, so I don't. Um, so no, I don't think I actually have a digital watch. Let's go check and hit the king. The Rolex I didn't buy it, you guys. So I got I got it as a gift when I won a chess tournament. Uh, let's just drop the queen back, bring the rooks to the center, and we're gonna we're gonna attack them with the two towers. I think there was a res blade for the 25 months. Where's the wall around 1600? Well, online and over the board are different. So if I use the scale of the plus minus 400 roughly, so say Tyler's 1400, which is about 1000 over the board, that sounds like a pretty reasonable spot that you will hit the you will hit your first wall um, in the game of chess. If, you, if you're taking it very seriously, especially as a kid, um, that seems like the spot where you will. So I'm going to go D5 and open up the center of the board immediately here. Let's go D6. Now I hit the pawn. I've got 97. Basically, I just wanna I just wanna take all the space in the center of the board and checkmate him. So it goes rook c8. Let's just 97 is good. Rook d1 is also very good. I just wanna go for for simple simple play here. Okay, let's hit the rook here. Do I think Tyler would ever reach 2k OTB? Zero chance. Zero chance. No. 2,000 over the board is like that's 2,400 online. That's like very serious, you guys. That I mean, that that's like that's I, I don't think people realize just how how difficult that is let's take the rook take with the queen and checkmate him yeah i mean that that's 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 i mean very few people very few people in chess will even make it that far so he sacks the rook let's take with the king and hide in the corner is is that like levy level no levy is uh levy is 20 like 20 close to 2400 over the board which online can translate anywhere from like 27 ish like even 2950 so um yeah i mean it's it, like yeah that, that's just it's, it's completely different let's check me let's keep going with the next game all right so in this game um i think again i'm gonna play e4 i think e4 is very, very it's a very good opening um levy is 23 22 otb yeah um but still 23 22 otb like if you add 400 that's like 2700 online uh and, and especially in that range there are people who, who can even get to like 2900 every so often so let's go bishop c4 and play d3 c3 I'm going to play the classic Gucci piano here. Um, now, one thing that I would say is I generally don't recommend the Gucci piano to beginner beginner players. But 
Yeah. Why are the ratings different on versus OTP? I assume because there are many more people playing. I mean, obviously, I don't know the exact stats. Levy, Levy was over 2,400 before. Levy got 2,900 and Blitz was it legit. That's not surprising. Yeah, it can happen. Yeah. That's not shocking at all. I don't like the Gucci piano at beginner levels generally because it's very difficult. Like you have to play for pawn breaks and at the beginner level, you need more. It's more about the piece play, open diagonals, easy to move, e easy, like easy night moves, open files for the towers, as opposed to slow maneuvering uh, mumbo jumbo. Any other shit good looks? Uh, oh, chess.com uses the Glico metric. Fide uses the Elo metric. Uh, obviously, I don't know what the difference is between the two. W what is the difference? Comments on Fabiano alleging 50% in title twos, they're cheating. I'll get a clip later and we'll, we'll 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 cover it. I'll get a clip. Let's go rookie 192 D4 night up one. Keep it going. Let's go back. 92 night of one night G3. And again, see it's very slow. It's very maneuver. It's very much about maneuvering here. And like there are no obvious pawn. I mean, you have pawn breaks, but they're not obvious why one is good, one is bad. And even the development is not so easy to understand. So that's why I really don't don't um Recommend. So I'm going to go knight g3 here. I want to go knight f5 or knight g5 and use d's knights. Maybe bishop g5 to also hit the knight. Okay, let's go here. And these d's knights are really active. I've got a great scope and everything is placed really, really well here to go in for the checkmate. Let's go here. Threaten bishop takes h6 to win a pawn. I have knight f5. I mean, it's getting very scary for my opponent. Also because it's bishop on b7, wrong diagonal. It's just staring at a pawn while it's guarded. Well, meanwhile, I have all these massive, massive threats here. Get d5. I think I can just take the pawn for the classic tactic, unless I'm missing something. I like d5, though, because if he tries to contest the center. He also shuts down the bishop scope, so it's a, it's a very aggressive move. It doesn't quite work here, but it makes sense. Uh, I didn't think the cheating was so widespread. More than 50% is a lot. I don't, I don't agree with Fabiano, frankly, on that. Um, I just don't believe... I don't believe that. Um, but, I mean... If that's what Fabiano thinks, fine. Like, that, that's his prerogative. Um, at queen e6, I guess I'll... For the beginner levels, I'll play queen f3. Trading and taking would lead to a winning endgame where I'm up two pawns. But here I want to show the power of the knight on f5. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't believe that. I'm just going to say I, outright, I, I just don't believe that. Um, I can go knight h5 or knight f5. I think I'm going to go knight h5 and try to checkmate him this way using d's knights on the rim. Looking like a Chad today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Like, what's the base for that accusation? Honestly, I don't know what... I mean, I assume it's that Fabiano probably assumes that he uh, he does worse in Title Twos than he should. Probably numerically, if I had to guess. But I, I honestly don't know, because I haven't watched a clip yet. I will watch a clip afterwards, though. Um, do I have knight f5, king f6, knight d4, the fossil? Let's clean, but let's just take the rook and go knight f5. No, I think what he's saying is not every week. I think he's saying that of like, let's just say there are 2,000 players who have played in title Tuesday over like the last three years or whatever. I assume he's saying that he thinks that 1,000 of them have cheated at some point or another. Um, okay, let's take, open up the, open up the file. He takes, he hangs the queen and now it's GG, why not? Let's just take the pawn. Now I have queen f7, which should be winning here. Let's take super GMs are a little bit paranoid these days. I mean, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, let's just go here, go for the checkmate immediately. Let's go check, hit the knight, and then rookie five check. Who's here? Do I have checkmate? This looks like a cute checkmate. There are no squares, right? Yeah, it's just a clean checkmate. Let's just checkmate. Power of the bishop and the queen from distance. I think it's a Rambo cards for the 21 month reset. Thank you, even PB for the 36. Thank you, Mike Miles Jar for the uh, 29 month reset. Thanks so much, Miles Jar. Okay, let's go back to the Karo Khan here. Very, very solid appro approach. What plans do I have in Morocco? I was going to be there for a filming project, but it fell through, unfortunately. Okay, now there are multiple ways to play, but I think bishop f5 at the beginner level, the cleanest one, just to retreat the bishop, push the pawn, knight, and bishop out. You be careful not to get your bishop trapped around the edge. So you can push h5 or h6. I would go h6 here just to not create an extra target for the knight and the queen. 
Let's go here to cut off knight to e5. Wasn't I filming something in Columbia last year? That was a Logitech thing. I don't know if it ever got released, actually. Because I think that there was something filming, but by the time that it was done, or by the time it was going to be released, I think that Myth, Myth was also a big part of that. And um, and by that point, I think Myth was no longer part of TSM either. So I, I don't know if that, I don't know if that footage was ever released or not. Yeah, it, it, was, it was in Columbia. But the thing is, is both Myth and myself were there. Um, and, uh, okay, one sec. I'm going to go Queen to Seven Castles here. Castle, go e6. Again, very simple play. Move the pawn, move the bishop. Very stable sun, center of the board. Let's go here. White castle, king, king side, because if I go e6 and bishop e7 and castles, down the road, white starts pushing stuff on this king side. And over here, these pawns aren't really able to come down the board quickly. And he's castle as king to this side, too. Yeah, that was TSM, exactly. Oh, I thought I said part of TSM. I didn't say misfits. Yeah, it was TSM. Anyway, okay. Um, let's just trade. And go bishop d6 to cut off bishop f4 here. Go c4. Very, very good move. Uh, I'm gonna play c5, try to try to break up this white center here. Also put pressure on the pawn on c4. Um someone was saying something about me not winning many title twos recently. I mean, it is true, actually. It's kind of funny that if you look at my title Tuesday score this year, I feel like at some point early in the year, I was actually winning an incredible amount. I think at some point very early, like maybe in February of this year, or maybe even into March. At some point, I think I was winning like 35% of the title Tuesdays that I played in. And now I think I think I'm winning something like 10%. Like it's gone way down in recent times. It's gonna have six to hit the queen. Uh, Fabiano mentioned it too. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, that doesn't mean that 50% of people are cheating. So I'm going to take here. If knight d4, I have a6. I mean, there's also some argument that basically as far as title Tuesday goes, that there are many more strong players playing. Like when I was playing the tournament last year even, like I was lucky it was like one or two other strong players played. But now it's like Fabiano's playing, Magus is playing, Wesley So is playing, Duda is playing, Dayak is playing. We go here, try to put something on e4. Like there's so many strong players who are playing now that, um, that I mean, that's why I question it. Title Tuesday is incredibly strong now, incredibly strong every week. Nepo, Ali Reza, yes, like uh, everybody. Thank you to Aloha Jaker. Thank you so much for the five month reset. Okay, let's take the knight. Pressure on the um, C file. Maybe I've got B5 here. It's a little bit iffy opening up the king, but I think I'm going to do it anyway because I feel like all my pieces are well placed here. So I'm trying to put pressure on the pawn on C4. He could take on F6 too, I guess. Thank you to name Mr. Wilkes for three months. Appreciate it. Thank you so much to name Mr. Wilkes. Thank you. There's King B1, which is an interesting move. Um, I think I'm just going to move my King out of the way. I could also check on E4 down the road. C squared was very, very wild yesterday. Okay. Okay, let's go B4. I don't really want to take on C4. I want to keep the position a little bit more closed. Let's go here. Create the double stack in the center of the board. Go here. Takes. Go here and take. Should be doing pretty well here. Um, his king is a little bit weak. Okay, trades the queens. This, I think, is actually winning for me. This should be winning. So I can go like here and king here let's go f5 and king here and i think i'm winning so i can bring the king in let's go here just connect the pawns and now i go here i win the pawn and with it i win the game or do i wait is there a trick here no there's no trick i just take let's just go here and shut shut the door and king b4 probably is winning but i can't even just take and just go here check and now i have an extra pawn and i just win the game i can bring the king over to eat the pawn on the edge as well just eat the pawn and win the game very simple this guy played pretty well though. that was a good game very very good game um can i make knights no i'll just make a queen he has to push a pawn 
Okay, next game. Let's play E4 here. It seems to me that everyone joined to stop you from getting your 50th win. Addicted? I, I don't know. Uh, Isle of Man turn... Where is the Isle of Man turn? It's played on the Isle of Man. Um, obviously, yeah, I mean, we know why it's called the Isle of Man. It is... Uh, um, it's in the middle, I believe, of the... Is it the Irish Sea? I think it's the Irish Sea, right? Or am I wrong? Uh, let's play Knight C3. It's, it's part of the United Kingdom, though. I think it's in the Irish Sea, if I'm not wrong. Now, let's play the Austrian attack in honor of the great country Austria here. Uh, for whatever reason, pushing these three pawns and claiming this massive white center is called the Austrian attack. It, it, it is a tax haven. Yes, it is a tax haven. Yeah. That's where they hold the uh, motorcycle race. Exactly. Let's go here. It's a very weird place to hold a tournament. The sponsor is there. That's why. Okay, I'm going to go E5. Now, there are many ways you can play Bishop D3, Bishop E2. E5 is one of the most aggressive and straightforward attacking ideas here. So he goes to H5, puts the knight on the rim. And now I'm just going to develop, bring the bishops to the center of the board. Let's go here, guard everything, keep my uh, diamond hands formation intact. It was F6, which I really don't like. I guess I'll just take this pawn. I'm actually not sure which one he'll take. He takes with the E pawn. I think I'll play D5, create some oxygen for my horse to go jumping here. Um, someone says, are you are you hiking? Are you could you visit Lake District before or after? I don't know what you mean. There are no games today in Qatar, you guys. So that's why I'm that's why I'm streaming today. We have no games here, so um we're, we're just chilling, having a good time. Hikaru with beard is better than Hikaru without beard. Yeah, I mean I look a lot younger without a beard. Um But anyway, um Uh we have some really eye-catching up-and-coming chess projects. Who do you think is the best to look out for? Uh, I mean, I've said it many times. The, let's go here and guard the bishop on e3. Obviously, the best uh, up-and-comers, without a doubt. I can just take and hit him with this check, which he missed. He thought after take six, he had f5 to fossilize the bishop and the queen. Yeah, he thought he was fossilizing me with f5, and then suddenly I'm in a lot of trouble. But he goes to f5 first. So now I jump with the horse. I've got a great bastion on e6. Nine ads. Can we go to kick? Sorry, you guys. We're streaming on Twitch today. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just what it is. Uh, don't you usually shave before the tournament starts and let it grow to that? Normally I do, but it's starting to bother me. It's just getting too long and too annoying. So I'm going to castle, go rook f3, rook g3, and just made him on the g file here with the rook lift. This knight is really good. This bastion is amazing on e6. Speaking of bastions, um, has Forsen finally beaten X XQC's record yet or not? Let's take the bishop here. Um, speaking of bastions in Minecraft, is he, he has, right? Or no? He still hasn't? I think Jolver for the Prime. I think Emmanuel Essen for the Prime. No. I think Chess Plunky for the gifted sub. Wow, okay. Nope, okay. I like that it's very resounding. It's like, nope, not even close. Like, he's so bad. Okay. So he could have taken the bishop here, but now I'm just, I have an extra bishop knight. King very weak here in the center of the board, so I'll just go check here. Good luck in Qatar Masters. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm doing well so far. It's going to come down to the last four games. We'll see how I do. Now I can just hit him with the check, and he's actually getting checkmated here. Very brutal. Just massive checkmates. He he got in around 10 seconds off the record. Okay. He's always close, but throws anyway. Fair enough. Yeah. Does studying the chess classics help a lot for improvement to 2,000 rate player? Depends what your rating's at. Hikaru, I love seeing you playing chess. Thanks for streaming. No problem. Glad you're enjoying it. Glad you are enjoying it. We got H6. Let's go check and made here. Very simple to the point. Do I like Qatar? It's it's nice. I mean, I mean this this the the skyline. Or the or the skyscrapers or skylines pretty pretty beautiful. Um, let's play e4 here. There's some nice malls nearby. Um, okay, I'm gonna get back to bases with the scotch. This is the opening that I played growing up, as I've said many times. It creates very easy play with the knights and the bishops coming out really quickly here. And I think that's that's what beginners should aim for. So play in the center and bring out the knights and the bishops. Let's go knight c3. Guard my pawns here in the center of the board. And the main thing is just you bring the knights and the bishops out. You put pawns in the center and. I, I don't think it's actually that hard to, to have basic openings with either white or black that achieve this goal. Let's go bishop e3 to guard the pawn. Thank you so much to Chess Coach Craig for the, uh, for the six months as well. Thank you so much to Chess Coach Craig. There's bishop e7. Okay, let's play d5, attack the knight. 
Can I play Gruenfeld openings? I could, but at the beginner level, I don't think anybody should play the Gruenfeld. Yeah. Uh, imagine how Reddit would hate you if you did what Magnus did, since it's Magnus, it's fine. Well, I mean, I would say there are a lot of things that Magnus has done um, that if anybody else did them, they would get excoriated for that. They would just, I mean, they would they would be in a lot of trouble. But because it's Magnus, a lot of it slides since he's the world champion. Um, I mean, I, okay, technically he's not right now, but still, you get the point. There's Queen C8 here. Um, I guess I'll just castle. Actually, I just blundered Bishop F3. Whoops, I wasn't paying attention. He could have taken here. I would have had a very bad king side. Um, so, thank you so much to C, uh, CR Pariah for the Prime. Thank you, CR, or CR Parish, sorry, for the Prime. Appreciate it. Thank you. Noterbeck is the. Oops, he hung the knight. The queen and the bishop connect. It's like the yo yo. So, yeah, when we talk about juniors, by the way, because I never did answer that question, the juniors are in India. India and India and Uzbekistan. I mean, like, I know one of the Uzbekis, uh, Vokidov, lost yesterday to, I think, uh, uh, Prag Pragnanta's sister, Vaishali. But I would say, like, the, the Uzbekis are very, very good. You have Noterbek Abdus Torov, you have Noterbek Yakubov, you have Shamsuddin Vokidov, you have Javokir Sindarov, who I played yesterday. Um, the Uzbeki kids are really, really good. Really good. They're good, and so are the Indians. The Indian Indians and the Uzbekis, I would say. I don't know wh who, who's going to end up at the top when all is said and done, but both of them are so good. Yeah. India has hundreds of them, though, so better odds of breaking through. That is also true. Now, I guess I'll take with the queen here, just mainly because I want to try to do something here. I've got an extra horse, so with an extra horse, I want to open up this position as quickly as possible. Giri got destroyed yesterday. Actually, you know what? As far as Giri getting destroyed, uh, I realized like Anish and um, and Gukesh and all these guys, they should actually be mad at me because I'm the guy who's always playing all these kids online and giving them this experience and, and making them better players. So yesterday, Anish Giri lost to Rude Macarian, who um, who I've played a lot online. Rude Macarian is his actual username on chess.com. And I played him a lot in like Title Tuesday and other things. Um, but then there are others like Buddy Pranav. Uh, another Indian junior who I think I've played Blitz against literally for the last five years. Um, Narianon, Indian lad. I've also played a lot of Blitz against him too. So, um, yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty pretty rough, pretty rough. Yeah. So, all right. Oh, we're playing Darks, who's actually a streamer on um on on Kick. Let's go C six and D five. So, yeah. I mean, there are other players here too. Like, there's also like there's the Armenian player Amin Ohanian, who I who I've played a lot of bullet against online, who's playing here. So yeah, there's just all these all these kids who um who I've played a lot of blitz against. And actually, to go back to the really old days, I remember when I was quite a bit younger. And um, in the early 2000s, Gata Kamsky and I were like playing against a lot of the like the Azeris, the Armenians, and the Russian players. And at some point, Gata basically was saying like, "Why are we playing these kids? Like, why are we playing against them? We're only giving them experience, and we don't get anything, anything in return for it." So um, I'm playing C5 to activate these knights. C4 is actually a pretty interesting move here. Um, so yeah. So he goes Bishop E3, and I can trade everything off here. Um, I think I'm just going to take on c4. Goes bishop c4. Um, let's just take the knight, take the pawn here. Thank you so much to uh, Lothar Durali Chetty for the prime. Thank you so much to take with the pawn here. So, um,. Why do chess champs play with kids? Well, I mean, it's obvious why I do. It's good content, obviously. Like, I get something out of playing against these kids. I get content. Uh, unlike 20 years ago when it was just Blitz games online where you get literally nothing. Thank you, Camp Over the Prime. Um, but, but yeah, I, I would say, okay, let's take another pawn, take the bishop, bring out the knight. The only problem for me is my king's in the center of the board. Am I the youngest U.S. player ever cross 2,800? Um... I mean, I guess if you if Fabiano broke twenty eight hundred when he was representing Italia, so technically maybe yes, but I I don't really I don't really think about such things, so I I don't know. Uh, let's just go knight six and bishop b seven and castles. 
Actually, I'll trade here because I have a bunch of extra pawns and a big black center. Let's go e5. Here come the pawns, pushing the p. Let's go here. Let's go here. I want to guard this pawn so I can move the queen. And then I will go e4 sooner or later. Let's go here in rook e8. Just continue to stack the pieces. Okay, let's push P, a five, and we push E4, and this big black center is on the march. Let's go E4, D3. I'm, get, I'm gonna get the connect five probably as well. Once I get D3, I get G6, we have a connect five, and it's all looking very, very hunky-dory. Keep pushing the P, I'll connect the five, or actually, I'll just go here and trade, because everything's guarded. Let's take, if rook D3 takes rook E7, I have D2 and I win the game, because everything is shielded by the horse. So he can't actually go for this. So he goes there. Let's go here. Um, I guess I'll just go h5. Create some space for the king. Actually, there was a free bishop that I missed, but it doesn't matter. Thoughts on the do better tweet? Um, I mean, Magnus is the world champion, one of the greatest players of all time. It's kind of weird that he's raging on Twitter like a little child sometimes. Like... It's very weird. He's a world champion. He's the most influence in the world. And he like he's on Twitter raging. I mean, it's just very, very strange to me. Let's go check in Rook F1. Uh, rook E2, I can just trade and play like rook, rook H1. Hit the pawn in H3. Let's go here and take the pawn. Okay, now, now I, can just cre I can just bring the king up. And now I can just push the P. There we go. This should be checkmate. All right, let's keep going. Thank you so much to Cheeky Draw for the 24-month resub. Uh, let's play E4 again. But there's also a second problem as well, which is that Magus's account um, is not... Um, it's not clear sometimes whether it's Magus tweeting or it's other people tweeting, because, like, Magus isn't the only person who tweets on that account. So it's it's very tricky. Like, it's either Magus Carlson or Magus Barstat, but we don't know who tw who's tweeting from his Twitter account. That's the problem. Um, the sniper guy here just, 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 to, just knock it. <laughs> sniper guy here just for knock it. Good one. Okay. <laughs> okay, bro. Uh, I think you're Dever Tendy for the eight months. Let's go here and hit the pawn on E5. That's, that's a good, good username. That's Castle. Uh, social media, I, I almost never actually do social media myself. Just like, I, I know there are a lot of people who get angry at me over YouTube, but like, I record the videos, but like, I don't do the titles. I don't do, I don't do any of the tags or any of that stuff. I, my team does that. So when Magnus chooses to like, go after me wildly, like he's acting as though I'm doing this like personally, like considering that he doesn't tweet half the things from his account, it's, it's just very strange that suddenly, suddenly he's going to go after me when he's literally has a team that manages his accounts most of the time. Um... Okay, he goes there. I'm going to play knight g6 and take the rook on h8 here. Is he wrong about watches, though? I mean, if those are the rules, he's not He's not wrong. Um, but your name, your responsibility. Okay, dude. Cool story. Like, yes. I mean, if, you, if, if, if my team tries to make a joke and they, they rhyme losing and accusing, like, fine. I mean, whatever. If, you, if people want to be like that, fine. I have no issue if people want to, want to like, be unhappy about those things. But at the end of the day, if people want to be unhappy about the issue, then focus focus the attention on everybody and not just on one person. Like, literally. Like, that's the problem with the chess world these days. Everyone gets outraged about this, that, and the other thing. But it's not really about the issue. It's just a chance to take shots at people. The, the perfect example is, like, the poker thing. Like, when, when Hans made that big tweet about poker, if, like, it really was about poker being bad and promoting it, then everybody should have been angry at me, obviously. They should have been angry at Levy. They should have been angry at Eric Rosen because it, it shouldn't be acceptable, period. But, of course, that's not what happened because it wasn't really about the issue itself. It was more a chance to take shots take shots at, at the Botas sisters. So, like, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I mean, like, it's just a bit bit too much. Let's just take here. Let's go queen g7. Keep the pressure alive here. Should be winning pretty soon. Okay, let's just take the pawn on e5 here. Play bishop f4. Actually, no, let's go back here because now I can play bishop f4. I can also go e5 to open up both of the both of the scopes here. Uh, let's go here, hit the queen, and now it's gg, why not, very soon. No draws, my friend, no draws. No draws. 
I could take a draw. I mean, it's unrated, right? There are only 13 seconds left, so he's gonna he's gonna run the clock down. Yeah, he's gonna run the clock down. Yeah. Should I be nice? Okay, let's get let's give him the draw. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's that that's funny. All right, you guys. So that's the end of the arena. We end up getting 46 points, 13 out of 13. We don't we don't run it up too high, but it's still still pretty good. Um. <laughs>